Hi, I'm Alex, and this weekend was round two of the GX UK Championship at Lid Cart Circuit. A new circuit for me, a place I've never been to before, but it's a really cool, fast flowing circuit, and also the temperatures were red, red hot, so we had lots of things to contend with. But I'm not going to talk too much, we're going to get straight into the video, and we're going to go straight into race one. And as the lights go green, I'm in fifth place. I am behind Tim Canes, and there is Richard Melton Baxter just in front of me, and Tim and Tom Angier in front of him. So I've already made my way past uh, Richard, and I'm now right on the tail of Tim. And I really want to get past Tim as quickly as possible because Angia has already got himself a few cart length gap and I want to try and go after this win. So I'm right up behind Tim. We're about to go into this fast right hander that goes into a very fast left hander. I will be aiming to line him up and have a go into the final corner, which is a double apex right hander. I'm now in his slipstream, got this nice strong engine on and I'm up the inside and Tim isn't going to fight me too much. And now I can get myself after Tom. Angia. So as you can see there are about four or five cart lengths between me and Tom but I get a really good run through that first chicane. I take a lot of curb and take a nice chunk out of Tom. And then as we come into the second chicane again I take a lot of curb. Tom actually misses that apex and actually costs him a lot of time. So now as we go through the hairpin I'm actually really really close now. I've at least halved my gap to him so we're going to see how much more we can take through these last couple of corners before the big back straight and see if I can have a go however with me and him up front thinking about fighting there are people behind who are going to be coming close to us so as you can see as I come through the final corner I've gained all of that time back that I've lost up behind Tim and I'm now looking for a way past Tom. Tom is now going defensive and the problem with this circuit because it's such high speed every time you defend you lose chunks and chunks of time and I'm very aware there is probably a Andy Hicks behind me and I know there is an angry Brad Philpot who started right at the back trying to catch up with us. As we come onto the back straight, I'm not as close as I want to be, so I'm not going to be able to make a run into this final corner. So I'm going to have to have a little look, just let him know I'm there, and we never know who's coming from behind. So as me and Tim start another lap, still nose to nose, we go into the first chicane again. Again, I take more curb and carry a bit more speed. I'm now right behind him now, straight up his bumper. I have a look into turn two, but he just cuts me off. We get a bad, both of us get a bad exit coming out of there and lose a little bit of time. We have to go quite narrow because I'm trying to attack. But what I don't realize is that Andy Hicks is right behind me. And because I have got a poor exit from the, from the hairpin and I haven't covered off the corner, Andy comes straight through through what else could go wrong so we are now down to third with Andy Hicks the championship leader in front of us chasing down Tom what I have to do now is get straight back to the rear bumper of Andy put him under pressure and try and get my second position back this is an opportunity for my first podium and I do not want to let it go so as I'm following these two, Andy goes very offensive onto Tom, but Tom sees it coming and reads it. But look how much it slows them down through that chicane. So I keep a good eye on them and watch what they're doing to try and get a good run through the hairpin. But that, there's nowhere for me to go right now. So all I can do is observe as Tom just defends a bit of fresh air, which doesn't give him the best run down the straight. So now Andy's going to have a really good run on him. Tom goes super duper defensive, so there's nowhere for Andy to go. So Andy's going to have to go back to the left to just try and optimize his exit. At this point in the race, I've lost a little bit of pace. I'm getting a bit of overheating on my tires and I'm sliding around a little bit. But I'm trying as hard as I can to hang on to these two. As we come towards the hairpin again, Andy is weaving left and right, trying to find a way past Tom. Tom is putting on a defensive masterclass in this particular race. He is doing really well to hold back the championship leader, as again we head through the fast left-hander onto the back straight. I've now got a good run down this straight and I'm closer than I've ever been. Andy has a little wobble. Maybe I've now got a chance this lap of getting past and getting back up into second place and challenging Tom for the lead. <laughs> Tom 
Tom and Andy's squabbles that go into the game. And then my front bumper leaks into the game. And the shark that is Brad Philpot has managed to get past me, but worst still, he has dragged new boy Jacob Sharrow through, and that is me down from P2 to 3 to 4 to 5. I've got a lot of work to do now. So as I take a breath and we start another lap and contemplate the way I can get myself back up this grid and past some of these guys that have got past me, it's all starting to kick off as Brad makes a dart down to the inside of Andy and clips Andy's rear wheel and then because he loses his momentum, Jacob has a good look and does Brad into the hairpin as Brad goes a little bit wide. I try and sneak up the inside too, but I'm just not there quick enough. Jacob then leaves the door open for Brad, and Brad just scoots straight back through so he doesn't lose too much time behind Jacob. Now Brad's testiculating, saying to catch up with the guys in front, and we'll see how we get on onto the next lap. And as we come through the final corner, Jacob has a look right behind to see where I am. I get a really good run through the chicane and I'm able to dart to the inside. But Jacob is just that far enough ahead that I can't make it work as Brad is now on the outside of Andy. Then to the inside as he goes up the inside to take second place. To go from the back of the grid to second is a really impressive feat as I'm weaving all over the track to try and get past Matt but I just can't make it work. At this point as well, I know I have Richard Melton Baxter behind me, bump drafting me down the straight, trying to help us both catch those guys in front and maybe benefit from any tussles they might have. As we start the next lap, it looks like everyone's kind of got a little bit of space between them. Everyone's taking the proper lines. There's no one actually really defending or attacking right now. Everyone's just having a bit of a breather and getting themselves measured up to try and go at it again. As Andy does have a little nibble at the back of Brad there, but Brad's too wise for that. Brad goes to the inside to be defensive for the right-hander so Andy can't dive up the inside of him because Andy's too smart for that kind of stuff. So... As they head back onto the final straight, I get really good run on on Jacob, and I have a sniff to the inside, and he weaves across me quite late as we start yet another lap. And as again, as we go over the start-finish line, I'm much quicker through this first chicane than Jacob is. Jacob, is looking around, knows I'm there, puts his car in the middle of the track so I can't get anywhere near him. Brad is sniffing around the side of Tim. Andy has gone to the outside of Brad and actually got just a little bit ahead as they're side-by-side side going into the right-hander. As they turn in, they have a little bit of contact. Andy goes a little bit wide, bumps across the tarmac. I have to dart over to the right-hand side. Richard Melton Baxter goes past, but ends up on the grass, gets sucked by the curb, spins around 360, hits Matt, nearly hits me, takes out Tom Stalker, who was just behind us, as we go across the line and start the final lap. Whoo! And that was that. There's no point in showing you the final lap because nothing happened. And I finished P4, which is my best ever result in GX UK. And then we come to the pit lane to get weighed. Brad was very happy because he came in the back to P2. I finished P4, so he was very happy for me. And we're talking, just sharing stories from the race. Very, very happy boys after race one let's see how race two is here we are ready for the start of race two with sebastian musica on pole followed by simon fuller followed by brad matthew roberts and me and then and then andy hicks so as i'm lined up behind brad you're going to try and push him through as we go past the acceleration line and the light goes green and we push our way through as we all go side by side no contact all nice and good i stay tight to the inside because i want that inside line as brad takes seb and takes 
first place and I pump in just behind Seb into third place. Now this is only Seb's second race in these carts so he is still coming up to speed. Once he's up to speed he will be formidable but at the moment I have a little bit of over speed on him. He does a good thing defending against me just going into that right hand there and now as we head back down onto the back straight he's got a couple of cart lengths on me. I go to the middle just to make sure no one's going to have a run up the inside of me as we line him up for the second lap. Then as we come into the first chicane I take all the curb I get a good run through even though I kick up a whole load of bark which surrounds the outside of this circuit I have to go middle because I'm still defending a little bit but Seb runs a little bit wide and I gain a tiny little bit of time on him as we come through the hairpin I get a good line through there lots of curb as we still focus on trying to catch Seb However, at the moment, I'm not close enough to Seb to really worry about what's going on with him, but I know I have Tom Angia, the winner from the last race, right behind me, so I know he's going to be eager to get past to get a second podium. So he's pushing me down the straight as we try and catch Seb. I've now got some temperature in my tyres. Seb runs a little bit wide through that first chicane, and now I'm getting close to him. Now I'm starting to smell blood to try and get second place and hopefully get through Seb quite quickly and build a little bit of a lead because it looks like Brad is very much gone. Now we're coming onto the back straight. We've got this fast right hander coming up. I get a good run through there. Seb gets a little bit squirrely on the entry and on the exit. So now I've got a really good run on him. He doesn't really go defensive. I think he's quite happy that he knows I'm going to go past him as he makes it fairly easy for me as I take second place. Now, I'm going to be in second place for quite a while, so what we're going to do is we're going to skip forward to a bit more action. As we jump ahead five laps, I have had my lead diminished as Jacob Sharrock has been closing me down. I get a bad exit out of the hairpin and into the right hand. And Jacob just sneaks up the inside of me, gives me a little tap as he comes through, which gives me a bad run. And Andy has to dart across the grass to get past me and then gives me a little wave to say thank you, I think. Um, or he was telling me off because he went on the grass, but I didn't know it was there. So now I have unfortunately dropped down to fourth place and I'm going to fight hard to try and get it back. At this point, I am now trying to defend from Matt. Uh, Matt has been very, very quick and has been hunting me down. As I come through this corner, I get a little bit squirrely. I go to the middle of the track. I go defensive. He and at this point he'd gone from my right to my left and has undercut me with a brilliant move. He is now on my outside and he hears a head going into this chicane and there was nothing I can do about that. As far as I'm concerned that was the best move anybody pulled all weekend. I remember sitting there watching that move thinking wow that was an impressive move so uh, well done Matt you talented little git. So at this point, I'm very frustrated. I was second, comfortable, and looking for a podium as I try and dart and have another go at Matt. But it isn't going to come off as I am just now try and dart around and spot different ways of trying to get past him. But that was the last lap and the end of that race. I was very disappointed to lose out on the last lap. Not a happy boy. Now here we are getting ready for the start of heat three but as we're coming across the line it's apparent there is a problem there is the green and yellow flag out which means we wave our hands around the air like the dance from Saturday night. So after another warm up lap we're all around and the race gets going again as we all pile into the first corner I go over the kerb have a little bit of a backup from the carts in front I then have Tom Engio next to me who has been a thorn in my side all day um, we've been very very close on pace as he gets caught on the kerb by Seb comes back nearly hits me as I try to get him around the outside and we come into the right left section and I'm thinking about lining up Seb for another move to try and get him down into the
So here from the editing room, my camera died. It looked like it overheated um, and I lost all the footage from that race. So what you're gonna see next is footage from my phone being handled by my dad. Um, my dad is a wonderful man, does many wonderful things, sponsors the cart. Camera work is not his forte. I apologize. Uh, thanks, Dad. I actually started at 11th and I'm now 7th, but um, sure. This is actually one of the better shots you got. As you can see, we're having a really good battle with a whole bunch of cars into this corner. Um, and you see them all come across together. All the cars look really, really good. I'm not entirely sure what Dad's trying to look at here. All the cars are out of focus. He's not looking at the right battle. Oh, there I am. I think Dad left the camera on for this one and just zoomed in on the on the ground for some reason. You can hear the cars. Oh, there's a car. Don't know. That's Mum saying where I am. And what's actually happened is, while chasing uh, Richard Melton, Baxter, and Tom Angia, I've touched the back of Tom. My bumper has got bent into my wheel, and therefore it's taken me off the circuit. I've had to jump out the track and then pull it out from the car, get back in the car, and go around again. We can always say he was running first. Well, there's my mum. Always my biggest fan, maybe sometimes not the most honest. And that was the end of that. So, an unfortunate end to my video. Uh, I finished sixth overall in the day. Um, Brad, who obviously, as you know, I garage with, he, he went on and won the event. Um, but it was a really, really good day. We had lots of fun. Unfortunately, we didn't get to do the final because one of the lads in one of the um, junior series had a rather big shunt, went over a tyre barrier, had a suspected broken leg. Fortunately, left the hospital yesterday. Uh, all was okay with him. But they had to stop the day there and then because we only had one ambulance uh, available to us. And once the ambulance leaves the circuit, we're not allowed to continue racing. But we are already all signed on for Hooton Park in three weeks time. Um, it's Manchester, so it'll definitely be colder. So I don't think my camera will overheat this time. So I'll come back to you with another video then. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you next time. Cheers. Bye.